Okay, in today's video, hopefully in 10 minutes or less, maybe a little more, we're going to go over a problem involving static equilibrium. This is kind of a long problem, so let's get started. We have the step-by-step -step sign sign, which has a mass of 18 kilograms, supported by this cable, which makes an angle of 35 degrees with this beam. The beam has a length of 2.1 meters and has a mass of 25 kilograms and is supported by this wall by the cable, comes down this way, supports the sign. The beam is attached to the wall by this hinge. And we want to know what is the force of tension in the cable. And we want to know what is the force from the hinge. Okay, now this problem involves static equilibrium, static because nothing's moving, equilibrium because all the forces, when you sum them up, will be equal to zero. So we're going to, and this problem has torques, so we're going to sum up the torques and set them equal to zero, sum up the forces in the x direction, set them equal to zero, and sum up the forces in the y direction, set them equal to zero. All right, there's a lot of stuff in this problem. You got to keep track of it. You got to think about it. I think it's best to go step by step. Step one, I would say, is to draw in all the forces. We got to sum them up. Let's draw them in. There is the weight of the sign. There is the weight of the beam, which I have put right in the middle of the beam. There is the tension force from the cable, and there is the force from the hinge, which is pushing back. Those are the four forces. Now we got to sum up the X and the Y components, so that means we got to break these into the tension force and the hinge force into their X and Y components, because they're not acting in the X and Y components. So the next step is to break them down. So FTX is the that component this component is fty the two x and y components of the tension force and then we have the x component of the hinge force and the x component excuse me the y component of the hinge force we've drawn in all the forces we broke the tension and the hinge force into their x and y components and now we can sum them up now i want to point out before we do that we want to find the tension force we want to find the force from the hinge we have these four components this is really what we're trying to figure out the y component, the x component, the x component, and the y component. We're going to solve, find these, and then use the Pythagorean theorem and some trig to solve for the actual tension forces. So these are the four things, one, two, three, four, that we're really trying to solve for because we're solving for the components. We broke those into their components. The tension force, excuse me, the tension force, the torques. There are three torques, okay? There's the torque from this force. There's the torque from the weight of the sign, and there's the torque, the rotation force from the weight of the beam. I am taking, and this is an important point, I am taking the hinge here, which seems to me to be the obvious place, to be zero. This FHY acts at the hinge. There's no lever arm. These two forces, FHX, FTX, are acting at 90 degrees, and therefore there is no torque resulting from those two forces. There's only torque from the y component of the tension force and from the weight of the sign in the beam. Any torque, any force that causes something to rotate in the clockwise direction, like this force and this force, by convention, those are negative. Any force that causes something to rotate in the counterclockwise direction is positive. So this is positive, this is negative, and this is negative. All right? Now, the x direction, there's only two forces, FHX, FTX. They point FHX in the positive direction, FTX in the negative direction, so we write down positive FHX minus FTX. You should notice that there's two forces. They're going to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And then for the Y direction, we have four forces. FHY, FTY point in the positive direction. FHY positive, FTY positive. MGB and the weight of the sign act in the negative direction, so they're negative. Now, we have summed up the forces. That's the end of that step. Don't forget any of the forces. Now, I'm going to write a term for all of these. Actually, not all of them. For as many as I can. And then we'll substitute them in and solve for the tension and the force from the hinge. It's important to notice we know the angle between the tension force and the beam. So we can use some trig to write terms for these two. We don't know the angle between the force from the hinge and its components. So we cannot write a term for FHY and FHX. Let's start with the torques, and I'm going to start with the torque from the sign. Okay, remember, torque is the force times the distance, the force times the lever arm, or MGD. The torque from the sign is the mass of the sign times the acceleration due to gravity times the lever arm. The lever arm is the distance the force is away from the hinge, and these are all acting 90 degrees to the 
beam, so we don't have to use any trig signs in this. So it's just 18 times 9.8 times 2.10, and you get 370 Newton meters. That's the torque from the sign. The torque from the beam is basically the same, except we use the center. This is, uh, has an e, uh, in the mass is evenly distributed across this beam, so the torque acts right in the center, and it's 25 times 9.8, because that's the mass of the beam, and times 1.05. That's the distance between the torque, the force, and the hinge. We get 257 Newton meters from the Y component of the tension. Now this is for the Y component of this tension force. We don't know the Y component, but we do know its lever arm. Its lever arm is also 210 Newtons. So we can only write this term. We can't solve for it like we could these torques. Now we're going to do the X and the Y component of the tension force. As I said earlier, we know the angle. The X component is adjacent to the angle, so it's the cosine of 35 times the tension force. That Y component, which we could draw over here, because it's a vector, we could move it over here. It's opposite this angle, so that's the sine of 35 times the tension force. Okay, That's your trig functions. Now we're going to do the force from the sine, which is mg for the sine, 18 kilograms, and the beam, 25 kilograms. Okay, so I kind of think that's kind of like the whole setup for the problem. All right, you've got to be very careful you don't leave something out and make sure you get all the signs and everything taken care of. Okay, on the next slide, I'm going to bring all this stuff with us except I'm going to get rid of the math, just the answers, and then we're going to start solving for some of the component values. All right. Now, here's our diagram. Here's all the equations we had, and here's all the values we have and what we know. Now, I'm going to substitute the values into the torque and solve for FTY first. Okay? We know FTS, 370. We know the tension, excuse me, the torque from the beam, 257, and we know half of the torque from the Y component. So we plug all those in. You can see it's simply these two added together, move to the other side, divide by 210, and you get the Y component, not the tension force, but the Y component of the tension force is 627 divided by 210, and you get 299 newtons. So the Y component of this tension force is 299 newtons. Okay, so we know one. We said we want to solve for one, two, three, four things. So then we can use trig to solve for the force from the hinge and the force of tension. Okay, I'm going to go over to the next slide and we're going to use the X components. Okay, once again, here's all our values. Here's our diagram. Here's FTY. We solve for FTY. Now I'm going to solve for FTX. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, we can just use trig to solve for the tension. And we could do that because we know one side and we know the angle. We could solve for the tension force now, but we can't. We need to solve for FTX because we need to FTX to solve for FHX because we don't know that angle. In order to get FHX, we have to get FTX because we know that they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now, once again, we're going to use trig. We're going to use the tangent. The tangent of this angle is the opposite, which is FTY, which we know, times the divided by the adjacent. So it's FTY, which we know is 299 divided by the adjacent side, because tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we can solve for FTX. FTX is going to be equal to the tension force divided by the tangent of 35, which means that FTX is 427. And we said FTX and FHX are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So those two are equal in magnitude 427 newtons. We solve for FTY. We solve for FTX. We solve for FHX, and now we're going to solve for FHY on the next slide. Okay. Once again, here's all my values. Here's the things we solve for. We got to solve for this last one. Here it is, right here in our Y component. We know FTY. We know this force. We know this force. We just plug the numbers in, add them up, move it to the other side, and you get the force of the Y component of the hinge is 122 newtons. Okay. Not that complicated. Here's all of our values. Here's our x and y component for the tension force, x and y component for the hinge force. We can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The force of tension is the x component squared 
plus the y component squared and the square root of those two, or the square root of the x component squared plus the square root of the y component squared. And you get the force of tension in the cable is 521 newtons, and we know the angle. Okay, do that on your calculator. Make sure you get 521. You can do the same thing for the hinge force, because we know that x component and we know the y component. We have a right triangle. So we can do the same thing. The hinge is the square root of the x component squared plus the square root, excuse me, the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, and you get that that is 444 newtons. So the force from this of this hinge pushing back is 444 newtons. Now, what is the angle? Well, we can use our trig functions. I'm just going to use the tangent here. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. We know these two. Okay, the opposite is the y component. The adjacent is the x component. That gives us that the tangent of the angle is 0 0.0286, and that tells us that the angle is 16 degrees. So this force is 16 degrees above the beam and is 444 newtons. Okay, I think that was a little more than 10 minutes, but I think it's pretty straightforward. You got to go step by step. You got to remember all of the forces, all the negatives, all the positives, the torques, sum them all up, set them equal to zero, step by step solve. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please, you can do one or all of these things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and give me a nice comment in the comment section. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.